I don't know about you, but I'm already tired of teaching over Zoom. The good news is that we don't have to teach over Zoom. A bit mind-blowing, right? But Zoom has a ton of powerful features and a lot of pros to it in terms of getting people together in one place where we can chat and discuss in as synchronous of a fashion as possible. However, that doesn't mean it's your only avenue to teaching. So I'm going to give you three alternatives to Zoom for conveying your course content to your students. And if you're interested in knowing exactly step by step how to do any of the things you see in this video, I'm holding a workshop tomorrow, Friday, August 14th on how to do this. And if you see this video afterwards and you're interested in it, don't worry, the replay will be available as will future workshops. You can find that workshop at epichighered.com and down in the comments below, there's actually a 20% off coupon just for you. So I wanna start simple. The first thing I suggest is a walk and talk. And now what is a walk and talk? A walk and talk is simply using your phone or another mobile device, even your camera, to walk and talk and record a video doing that. Heck, you could be on Zoom even, but I, I recommend recording the video in case who knows what you come across as you walk through the streets here in Chico. You don't know what you'll see. But the power of this is if you're trying to discuss a big topic or something that is less technical and more idea and theory heavy, it allows you, the expert, to talk through this theory in a way that is natural. And it helps foster connection to your students and helps them get a better understanding of the material when it's not canned, right? These theories, these big ideas, don't fit in perfect boxes most of the time, so why present it that way? Present it on a walk, use a train of thought, and if you're recording and need to edit something out, you can do that. So a walk and talk is the first place I suggest as an alternative to Zoom. The second tip I have is actually podcasting. Now, what you can do with podcasting is with tools like Descript, which are free to start, you can actually start recording. And when you start recording, the really cool thing about Descript is it is going to start automatically translating what I am saying. So there's a few reasons to start podcasting. One, it requires lower bandwidth than video calls. So students who have potentially limited internet access or broadband can access this material in a more meaningful way. Also, think about how you digest podcasts. You listen to it washing the dishes, cleaning your house, going for a walk, driving. Your students will be able to engage in your content like never before. The fact that it's all audio is really powerful. And you might say, Dustin, well, what about the visuals? Visuals are so important. And you're right. You could cue them through it. Give them the PowerPoint slides and say, all right, we're looking at slide number two now. And the other really powerful thing about a tool like Descript that you're seeing on screen is that at the very end of it, when I am done recording, I can edit this like a manuscript. So if I don't like this sentence, I can highlight it and delete it and boom, it's gone. Just like a manuscript, you can edit this, export not only the audio, but the text file. And even more accessible than an audio file is the actual text file. And this also creates resources that you can have going forward for your students. They, if a student misses a lecture, once you're back face to face, say, go listen to this podcast to make it up. This is a really cool way to diversify your lecture content. And with services like Anchor, where sign up is completely free, 
and hosting is completely free, it's easier than ever to do this. The third and final tip that I have for you is watch parties. Now, there is value in curating different things from across the internet, TED Talks, YouTube videos, etc., and having your students watch those instead of trying to recreate them yourself. Or even if you are recreating your own material, a watch party is a way that students can come together with you to watch and digest that week's materials in a meaningful way. And in that watch party, you could do this in Zoom and share your screen. And I know we're saying getting away from Zoom, so I also suggest YouTube for this. YouTube actually will stream video content better, but you have to be careful of copyright because they will shut down your screen if you are sharing copyrighted material. However, what you do is play the materials or read the materials that you are asking your students to digest that week with them. This allows them the chance to ask questions, this allows you the chance to highlight important material and make the content more relevant than ever and make cor the course more engaging than if you were just talking at them over Zoom. So hopefully things like watch parties, walk and talks, and podcasting can help diversify and break your teaching out of the box that is Zoom. I would love to hear how you're going to implement these things or what you're doing in your classrooms to break away from Zoom down in the comments below. And I'd love it if you liked and subscribed. We'll see you next time.